Welcome, everybody, to the newest episode of Spark Sessions, Developing an Effective Marketing Strategy. If this is your first time here with us, thank you so much. And if you're returning from a previous episode of Spark Sessions, we greatly appreciate the support. My name is Phil Lavanco, and I'm going to be your moderator today. Spark Sessions is a webinar series from your friends at NiceTech and Ignite You, designed for small businesses and entrepreneurs to empower you to grow your business. The tools and confidence needed to overcome challenges, seize opportunities, and drive business towards sustainable growth. We're going to provide you valuable content that is relevant, timely, and applicable to the diverse needs of our audience. First off, little housekeeping stuff. We want you to mute your microphone. We want you to turn your camera off. We want to make sure you're fully engaged in today's webinar. And if you have any questions along the way, don't be shy. Type them in the chat box on the bottom of your screen. So now, before we begin, a congratulations are in order for you, our viewer. You've launched your company or you're thinking of launching your company. That's amazing. Let us show you how to get the word out today with our webinar, Developing an Effective Marketing Strategy. Now I'd like to introduce you to our host, Kayla Bryan. Kayla is an account executive at the Digital Marketing Group based in California. But Kayla is on the West Coast still. She's in California. She's on the board at the American Marketing Association in Sacramento, and her company, DMG, just celebrated their 10-year anniversary. So without further ado, here's Kayla. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so glad to be here. My name is Kayla Bryant. I am with Digital Marketing Group, and I'm going to share a little bit with you today about how to develop an effective marketing strategy for your business. So today we're going to dive into all things digital marketing, and we will just take a look at, first of all, how you're going to set your goals what your customer experience is, a little bit about your website. We're going to look at some long-term marketing strategies. We're going to talk about consistency, managing your data. Toward the end, I'm going to make some DIY recommendations for businesses who may be just starting out or just dipping their toe into the world of digital marketing. And then toward the end of my presentation today, I'm going to give you some uh, products and strategies that we can activate on your behalf or you can activate through an agency for your digital marketing long-term plans and help you meet your goals. So we will get right into it. The first question I want you to think about today when we're diving into the world of marketing, which is so expansive and overwhelming sometimes, but the simple question is how are people getting to your website currently today? Someone has gotten to your website, we want to know how they got there, why they got there, and then we'll start thinking about what their experience is on your actual site. So Google Analytics is the best way that you're going to want to start tracking your traffic sources. Um, Google Analytics is a completely free tool, and recently it's been upgraded to GA4, so Google Analytics 4. If you haven't been on there in the past few months, you want to make sure you sign in and upgrade your account to GA4 so that you are tracking all that appropriate information and that you're bringing current data into your platform. Um, the old versions of Google Analytics um, are no longer collecting data. You still have access to your old data. But they're no longer collecting new data for you. So you'll want to dive in here and just find out how are my potential clients coming to my website. So you'll see on this example on the screen, there's organic search comes in on top. So this company has likely done some SEO work, search engine optimization, so that they do show up in an organic search when people type in relevant keywords to their location, their business, or their services. Um, direct means someone just typed that URL into the top bar. Referral means they got there through some other link and then organic social means they may have clicked through from your Instagram page or LinkedIn page, something like that, or obviously an email if you're reaching out to customers that way and that's how they got to your site. This is valuable information because it helps you see what are you already investing in that is a valuable strategy that's bringing traffic to your site and then what is a strategy that's bringing traffic that maybe you want to adjust a little bit. Maybe you want to put a little bit more effort there. 
So always important to track your data, know your data, um, and just have access, especially when we're talking about a free tracking tool that you can use with your website. This is just a little more Google Analytics diving a bit deeper. So we're going into conversions now, and these are events that you can set up, actions that you essentially want people to take on your website. So you can see the ones that are set up here would be page view, session start, first visit, video progress, file download, um, things like that, that you are wanting people to do. So when people do get to your website, what actions do you want them to take? And you know how available are those actions for people to take? And then you can actually track when and how often people are taking the desired actions on your site through Google Analytics on the conversions tracking. So we are going to jump in a little deeper to websites here. Standard website versus mobile optimized website. We all know, and we probably experience this ourselves, that the majority of people are using their mobile devices to surf on the internet these days. Um, we're, you know, we're always on social media or we're looking something up for work or we're checking our email. It's usually happening on our phone if we're out and about or even if we're at home sometimes. And we want to make sure that your website is standard, is, is optimized for mobile devices. So you can see a standard website would show up really, really small and tiny. It would have a lot of calls to action that are hard to click on if you're on a mobile device. Um, and then a mobile optimized website looks like the one here on our right. And there's just, it's much easier to identify the actions that the website is wanting you to take and for the user to have a positive experience navigating through the things that they're searching for on the site. Um, Google also really prioritizes the speed of mobile websites. So if you have a clunky standard website that's showing up on mobile like this, it's probably loading really slowly because it's full of photos and videos and links. Um, and Google kind of knocks you down for that. So to so have your best SEO experience for your website, you will want to make sure that you are fully optimized toward mobile. And that can be done through you can do your own research and work on that, or um, a company like mine can support you through our SEO strategy. And then you'll see a contact form there. Um, really important that you're making clear calls to action for what you want your people to do when they get to your website. So you spend a lot of time and money most likely putting this website together. You wanna to make sure it works quickly. And you also want to make sure that once people get there, it's clear what actions you would like them to take. Next, we'll talk a bit about URLs. So here we have a really long random URL with a bunch of letters and numbers. None of it means anything. Um, I'm sure we've all seen these before. And then we have a better example here of you just have your structured website, your regular URL, and then slash and whatever page it is that you're wanting people to see and identify. Now, these are important because they also work as keywords on the back end. So for search engine optimization, helping you rank higher with Google, you'll want to have your URLs set up really clearly as well as the pages on your website so that once people arrive, they know, you know what's going on. And it also helps more people who are searching for what you have on your site to find it just a bit more easily. Here we're going to talk about um, just creative. So we work with a lot of clients who are, they, they all have different goals and we work really on a customized basis to help them reach those goals. But what you want to think about is, you know, who are your clients? What are you trying to get them to do? So here, this is about, you know, some education that they're wanting people to enroll in. That's why the call to action is enroll today. Uh, and they'll want to have someone fill out a contact form immediately after clicking this ad. So you want to make sure that the ad is clear, you know, what, what it offers is clear. And then when somebody clicks through on that ad, the page that they are taken to is also clear so that they know exactly, you know, what actions they're are available for them to take and then contact forms help you collect your own first party data so that you can reach those people again if someone said they were interested in enrolling in your course applying for your job 
purchasing your product, any of those kinds of things, you can reach out to them via email or via whatever other um, platforms you have available if you're collecting that phone number, email address data. So we'll really wanna talk next about your audience. Who are they? Who is your audience? Um, where are they? How do we want to speak to them? And you know, how are we going to reach them? So every every single business that I talk to has a, a different audience, even if they're a little bit similar. There's either going to be some different messaging that's going on, some different targeting about how we're actually going to identify who these people are. And then we'll just want to craft that really customized message strategy and ad sequencing to actually reach them. So it's real important, obviously, that you spend some time just really diving into who is your audience. And we have some tools on the back end that can help us um, help us help you do that research. But really important to use what you have available to you to find out, you know, who are they as far as demographics, age groups income levels? Do they live in a single family household? Do they have children? We can dive into all of those pieces to help craft a customized strategy that speaks directly to whoever it is that you're trying to reach there. Really, really important to know who your audience is. One of the tools that we have available is location targeting. We actually call it polygonal um, targeting and attribution here at Digital Marketing Group. Um, but what we do here is we go ahead and draw a polygon around a location. So that location could be, let's say your business is a coffee shop. You're opening a new coffee shop in your city, um, brand new. You don't have a client base yet because you haven't opened. So what we're going to suggest that we do, and we can pull this you know, just for data, and then we can actually also serve this audience specifically, We'll draw polygons around all of the coffee shops in your neighborhood, in your city, however far out you want to go. And we'll actually pull mobile device data from those competitor locations so that we know who has been there um, over the past, let's say, 90 days. We usually recommend pulling the past 90 days so that we can then take that demographic information and A, show it to you so that you're seeing you know, what kind of people are going to coffee shops in your local area. And then B, we can actually take the ads that we've created for you and serve them to all of those people who've been to your competitors' locations um, because we know that they're interested in coffee shops because they've been to one in the past three months um, and they are likely in your area. So we can actually capture that audience and serve the ads to them. This works really well also for events. If you're looking to capture traffic from a specific exposition or trade show that you know a lot of your clients are at, or even one that you've had a booth at yourself um, and you're interested in retargeting that audience, we can grab that data and serve all of the people who attended and open their mobile device while, they're, while they were there, which is most likely everyone, um, we can serve ads to them on your behalf. This is an example of a PTA report. I believe this one was from a golf course nearby where I live in California. Um, so we captured over those 90 day period, that 90 day period when we pulled this report, we captured 27,000 devices here. And that represents over 208,000 total visits at that one location that we were targeting. Um, Really interesting. We can dive in and see a lot more data on each of these reports, but here's just a quick snapshot of what I captured here. So it shows the age range breakout, and it also shows down here at the bottom, you know, male and female, whether they have children, and then their household income uh, ranges. And these are all available, you know, to use again, so that you can just know who you're working with as an audience if you're trying to market to them. Um, as well as we can lob off any of these data points. So let's say you only want to serve ads to people who are between the ages of 40 and 54. We can cut out all of the other data. We can also lob it off by how, how many times someone has visited or where their home location is. 
So we can dive into all that zip code data and, and fun things like that um, and serve you a really, really specific audience of people that you know have been somewhere that you're interested in also targeting. Another thing we can do um, are some audience audience extensions with this tool, uh, one of those being predicted movers. So let's say you're um, you know, interested in selling insurance or real estate. We can actually predict with this tool based on a location um, who's likely to be moving in the next few months and start serving ads to them. That's of interest. We can also pull specific industry information so lots of different ways we can pull data for you. Um, if you're interested in learning more about that, be happy to chat about it later. Um, obviously, creative is a really, really, really important part of your marketing strategy. This is what people see, um, you know, probably before they even see your website, someone's going to see your creative, whether that just be your organic social creative or your actual ad assets like seen here, um, which you may run through a social media platform or you may run just across the open internet. It can be video or it can be static like we're looking at as just a display ad here. But what we want to do is make sure that whatever creative we're putting out there is good. <laughs> we'll see on the left and on the right a, a better example and a poorer example. Um, the one on the right is just a little overcrowded. It doesn't have great font. It's a little bit hard to read the font that's there and the color of the button. It's hard to read the call to action. While the one on the left, while not, and the most exciting ad I've ever seen or anything like that, it's just more clear. You know, I can tell what they're offering. It's candles, they're 30% off and I can buy one by clicking on that button. So you just wanna make sure that you have really, really clear um, ads and creative. Again, here we can see, you know, which one would you be more likely to click on just based on how it looks and, and the readability of it even. And here as well, we want to make sure that we're, you know, not overlaying text over our background that it almost matches with. And, and when somebody sees the ad, they know exactly what the goal is there. All right, so for your overall strategy for marketing, again, a lot to think about that we can help guide you through in a, a deeper conversation, but you're going to want to start with your awareness, your brand awareness. If people don't know about your brand, um, they can't, you know, make an action based on that information they don't have. So you want to make sure that your brand is really strong. You have content and that you're communicating who you are to your audience, you know, what makes you unique in the industry. There may be 7,000 other people who are doing exactly the same thing you do in business. So the key there is going to be marketing, you know, putting out there in front of your audience over and over again, who you are, why you're unique, why you're important, and why people should want to buy from you, work with you, whatever it may be. And then interest here, because we've moved down the funnel. So people First need to know you exist, then they need to be interested in what you're offering. And we do that by, you know, just repeating exposure and optimizing. We run ads, we test ads, we run different types of ads, we collect data from that. And we make sure that, you know, the interest that we're, we're generating matches up with what we're offering. So our, our content is actually connecting with our target audience and our potential clients in a way that speaks to them, therefore creating desire. So we'll move down into, we had awareness, interest, and now someone actually is wanting to work with you because you've created that desire by they know about you, they're interested in what you offer, and now they need or want it based on what they've seen. So after that, we just need them to take that final action. This total funnel, it varies by person, but we usually like to see at least seven touches. Um, so seven times someone has viewed your ad or seen your services um, in front, displayed in front of them is when they're more likely to take that action. So they'll make a decision on whether or not they're going to purchase from you or work with you um, around the seventh time, sometimes even longer, depending on 
your, you know, what your customer journey is and what your sales cycle is and what you're offering and what the price point is and all of those factors, of course. But we just want to make sure that we're collecting that data. You know, when we first started generating awareness, we placed a pixel on your website. It's what we would do with our clients so that they're already collecting data from that very first click on the ad. And now that you're taking people through the cycle, you have that pixel data to work with. So we've tracked every single device that has visited your website and we're able to retarget them and serve them additional ads. So we might want to create a few different sets that look different, have slightly different messaging and send them out to our specific identified audiences so that we're telling them, you know, what now they need to do that they have all of this information. So your course of action here is going to be, of course, you want to identify your goal, know what your goal is in the market. Um, you know, is it to make X amount of sales over a certain amount of time? Is it to improve, you know, your efficiency in the sales cycle by X percent? You really want to have that goal nailed down and know what your key performance indicators are so that we can help you craft that best strategy. So you have your goal, we're crafting a strategy based on who your audience is, we're taking tactics that are going to speak directly to that audience, and then we're going to deploy strategies that help you reach your KPIs. So that we're going full circle there, starting with the goal, putting together a strategy, pulling in tactics that support that strategy based on targeting, through all the different platforms and then making sure that we're measuring against those KPIs. So we're not just saying, this is my goal, throw out a bunch of stuff and hope it works, but we're actually tracking along with you what your KPIs are. So we can track metrics from the back end, and then you can track your metrics on Google Analytics. And then of course, through whatever um, sales tactics you use to manage your business, it's a back and forth conversation between your marketing team and your sales team, typically, where you're going to be able to really hone in and track those KPIs and make sure that what you're doing makes the most sense for your business and your goals. Right now, I'm going to move into my top three DIY recommendations. These are really good for businesses who are just starting out. And then right after this, we'll jump into some more like paid media strategies that can be really effective for businesses who are more established or are just really ready to dive in with a bit of marketing budget to support what their goals are in the marketplace. So first DIY recommendation would be a Google My Business account. Everyone should have one of these. Um, I'm going to want you to set it up. First of all, claim it. You'll need to go through a verification process with Google, which they've actually recently made a little bit easier. Um, sometimes they'll need to mail a postcard to your house. Sometimes you can just do it from your computer, but they need to make sure that you're real and you exist. And then you'll want to optimize your Google My Business listing. And what we mean by that is you're going to want to go in with at least three relevant photos that you want people to see immediately upon Googling um, what your services are. So let's say you're a local plumber business and someone types in plumber, you want to be showing up on Google at your best. So you want to have your website linked to your Google My Business. You want your location and phone number on there listed completely correctly, capitals, everything like that, um, your business hours, and then you'll want to have some photos there available. Uh, reviews are really important on this as well. Um, important that you make sure your location and contact info matches exactly on your Google My Business and any other listings. Um, when we do this for clients, we use at least 30 other directories that we're listing through, um, Hot Frog, Yellow Pages, all of those types of places. Um, if you're doing this yourself, I would recommend creating a listing on as many as you can and make sure that, um, again, that information matches. That just helps you get a local search boost, especially if you're a service-based business. It'll help you reach more people, really, really low funnel people who are searching for exactly what you offer um, in your area. And the, there's really nothing more you can ask for because it's a completely free tool. So definitely, definitely make sure your Google My Business is set up and optimized. 
my next DIY recommendation would be to have a website. So I know we talked about websites a lot earlier, um, but we just need to have one these days. It's not really an option to not have a website. So there are some interfaces that are available if you are like a really small business starting out. For example, you can just create your own using um, Wix or Squarespace or something like that and just have that up there and hosted so that there is information. Your website after, you know, after that first touch, whether it's a Google search or an ad, is going to be the first real interaction that someone typically has with your business. So before they ever make a phone call and get to speak to, you know, your friendly customer service representative or you yourself as the business owner, um, they're going to have an impression of you in their minds and you want it to be a good one. So you just want to make sure that when you're on your website creation process, it's your website looks really clear, super clear call to actions, contact forms, lead collection forms, so that people can get on your website, learn a little bit about you just enough so that they want to work with you and take that next action that you're wanting them to do, whether that's a form fill or a phone call. And then, of course, relevant social media accounts. Um, social media changes every day. Um, and the it seems like there's a new platform all the time. But what I really would like everyone to do is make sure that they're just using relevant social media accounts. So if you know who your target consumer is, you probably have a good idea of which of these um, platforms they're spending the most time on based on their age and based on kind of the industry that you're looking to work within. So if you're heavily business to business type um, that you're looking to target, you might want to look into LinkedIn and do some research there and see if that's where your audience is living and spending their time. You know, if you're looking to target millennials, you Probably Instagram is your best bet. Gen Z, you're going to be looking at TikTok. YouTube spans a pretty wide variety. And then maybe Gen X and Boomers, you'll be looking at Facebook. Um, this is a general rule of thumb there, but you will really want to do some research. And of course, we're available to help support that as well. But on any of these platforms, whatever you're doing, it's important that you stay consistent so that you're target consumer remembers you and knows that you're there and thinks that you are a leader. Just something that they may or may not know that is interesting to them. So you'll want to try to post one to three times a week just to keep that audience engaged and keep them, you know, they're supporting you, especially if you're a smaller business. People love supporting smaller businesses and just liking your posts, leaving your reviews all those kinds of things. And while we're talking about reviews, um, we'll want to make these three top recommendations work together. So again, these are essentially free and you can use them to your advantage. So one thing, depending on the industry, there can be some legality issues here, but I like to suggest clients run a raffle or some kind of giveaway on social media, whether that's a free consult or a gift card or um, you know, something physical that they can have, um, it's helpful to entice people to take the action you want them to take, whether that's you need some more followers on your social media account, or you want more reviews on Google, you can entice those reviews with a giveaway or a raffle. And then you can take those reviews that people have, the kind words people have to say about you, um, you know, whether they, they hired you before, or they're just someone that you've worked with over the years, you can take those testimonials and use them on your website so that when those new clients come to your website, they can see that people love working with you or buying from you. And you can also share that back to your social channels as a review. So key takeaways here are going to be learn your traffic sources and your site usage, especially with your Google Analytics. We're going to make sure that you're mobile first and optimized for mobile device experiences with your website. Revisit your creative messaging and make sure that you're telling people what action you want them to take. And it's not just like, hey, we exist, but it's like, do this thing, fill this form, call us, buy this use this coupon. Be consistent, whether that's with your social media presence, your website, make sure your branding is consistent. So you're using the same fonts, the same colors across all of those things, even in your emails, um, same types of images, same look and feel to everything. And then with your schedule as well. So 
You won't want to um, you won't want to overwhelm your audience by emailing them every day. They'll quickly unsubscribe. But um, if your if your typical cadence is email once a month, twice a month, make sure you're doing that every month and you're not emailing them just once a year. Um, if it's posting once to twice a week on Instagram, make sure you keep that up. Really important for you, especially as a business owner of many different sizes, to prioritize your time. You know what your strengths are, um, and then you can always reach out to someone like myself who works for you know a marketing firm or a PR firm or a marketing agency, as I do, so that we can help support you get the results that you want and the results that you need without wasting your time. You know, diving in. We don't want you diving in to try to figure out how Google AdWords works um, when we have a specialist that you know has been doing that for years and that's all they do. It sometimes makes the most sense to just take that off your plate, focus on what you do best, focus on growing your business and your sales team while we take care of the marketing. So just know when's the right time to do DIY and when's the right time to ask for a little help. Um, on that note, I'll move into a little bit of some paid media strategies, a little bit about what we do, what I do at Digital Marketing Group. Um, just to go over a few of these. So we are a pretty full service marketing agency. We go everything from creative, so helping you design those actual ads, design your website, um, all the way to deployment of running the ads, tracking the ads, reporting back to you. And we run those across a plethora of different platforms. So I'll go through some of those really quickly. These are some of the buckets of what we offer and what you can find at many marketing agencies. So we have paid media, social media, web development, and SEO. Um, search engine marketing falls in here as well. And then we have creative and strategy. So we can start again with that SEO local listing. We can help you get that Google My Business account set up and optimize and list you across those other 30 platforms without you ever having to think about it again so that you're not, again, wasting your time, make the most of your own time and let us take care of that if that's an option for you. Um, creative services that we offer, again, include helping you with your website. We can build just a specific landing page if you need one or we can redesign the whole site, graphic design, um, brand development if you need a guide for that, if you need a new logo, if you need just some creative assets, uh, video and video production. So we can actually shoot you a full commercial um, and place that for you. And then photography as well. We love putting together uh, just a, a brand library essentially for people who, you know, have services that they want to promote. And we can have that in their back pocket for when they're changing up things on the website or posting on social media. So they don't have to create that new content on a daily basis. We can help you manage your social media accounts as well. Um, so that's something you know you can either do yourself or outsource, but you'll wanna be consistent with that social media strategy, um, engage with your audience, make sure you're actually replying to comments that you get and DMs that you get on those different platforms so that they know that you know, you're know you personable and you're quick to respond and you're easy to work with. All of those things can be communicated through a strong social media presence. Programmatic advertising includes just those ads that you see when you're browsing the open internet. So you're checking the weather or you're checking your email ads that pop up or just programmatic display ads. Those could be videos or those could be just regular animated or static ads. And we have a lot of hyper-targeting available here to go through and grab people that we want to advertise to based on their internet behavior, um, their interests, things like that, all of that third-party data that we have access to. Paid social advertising, same thing, but these are within the walled gardens of the social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. So we can help you set up a really, really targeted campaign here. Make sure you're reaching exactly who you want to reach on the platforms rather than just spraying it out and hoping that um, it hits the right people, we can make it really targeted for you so that you are actually reaching the people you need. And then we'll report back to you on how each of those strategies performed. Search engine marketing, again, um, our SEM guy used to work for Google. So he's very familiar with how the keywords work. 
and how we can get you showing up at the lowest, lowest funnel when people are already looking for what you provide. Search engine optimization is the same concept, but a very different strategy. We call this the vitamin. This is like stretching your legs, taking a walk, drinking your water. Really recommend this for any business that's you know serious about staying in the game long term. Search engine optimization is going to help bring organic traffic to your site um, by building up links, by optimizing on the back end of the actual the guts of the website. Um, and then you're also going to want to build up that PR strategy with blogs and things like that on your content side as well. So this is not something that's going to get you results tomorrow, whereas back to search engine marketing, you turn it on tomorrow, you could be getting calls. Search engine optimization usually takes about six months to get it really solid. We have placement on streaming TV as an option as well, so we can actually get you on the largest screen in home, which is really significant, you know, depending on who you're looking to target, but we uh, have that capability and we also can import that really granular data into these platforms so that you're only targeting people within a certain city with specific interests, things like that. So it can be a pretty small budget TV campaign as far as that goes. Uh, we have influencer marketing activations as well, which is awesome for getting authentic voices to speak about your brand. So this looks really, really different for every industry. Um, you might think of influencer marketing as they sell makeup and purses, but um, we've used it for some really impactful campaigns with healthcare brands, um, all kinds of different options here, even agriculture, where we've been able to have these influencers share really personalized stories and experiences that speak to a target audience in a way that your brand just can't through traditional advertising. So influencer marketing is a really impactful strategy that we love to deploy. And here are some samples of some ads that we've done that run through the actual influencer handles. And then digital out of home venues. So these can include like those large digital billboards that you'll see, but also things like little screens on the bus, um, those screens that you have within grocery stores or gyms um, or health kiosks, all kinds of car charging places, all kinds of places there are screens these days where we can actually place your ads. Um, here's an example too, one in a mall. Streaming audio, so um, podcasts are really big these days and placement within a podcast as a commercial can be a really impactful strategy, again, depending on who your audience is and where, you know, how you're looking to target them. But that is one of the kind of up and coming strategies that we can place as well, as far as getting you in a really, really specific audience when you, based on both the behavior of the target audience and the context of the podcast itself. And then again, we can help we can help you determine your um, online user behavior of your audience through third party data targeting through behavioral and contextual. So placing on those sites that would be relevant to you with your ads, retargeting with that pixel that we've placed on your website and started collecting all that data, like we talked about a little bit before. Um, our polygonal targeting and attribution that's more drawing that polygon around a point of interest or a competitor location, um, as many as you need to pull in a new audience for you. A lot of scary things we can do with our PTA data. Um, I love the social extension. That's where uh, your phone knows the 10 devices it spends the most time next to. So we can actually serve ads to those 10 devices as well as your own so that you um, can imagine that if your phone is spending a lot of time next to those 10 devices, they may have similar interests and lifestyle as that person. And that can be an effective strategy as well as some of these others listed household extensions, audience and selected categories. And any campaign we run, um, any of the strategies I just went through or talked about today, um, at, at least at my agency, we're constantly behind the scenes optimizing those. These days with AI, it's um, pretty easy for an agency to set something up and just let it run that way forever. We really pride ourselves on going in and having our human experts behind the scenes 
um, checking. We check every couple of days. We pull pacing reports every week and we pull optimization reports as needed when we see if something is uh, either underperforming or we think it could be performing better or differently. We do lots of A-B testing for our clients between copy, between creative, really make sure that we're making the best use of our clients' budgets. Um, and I think that, you know, you if you're ready to work with an agency, we'd love to have that conversation. Also, you should be doing this yourself if you are managing in-house, because it's really important to know not only where your ad dollars are going, but how they're performing and how they're performing in relation to each other, in relation to what you've done and seen before. Um, optimization is extremely important in marketing and advertising, all of the things, just to make sure that you are reaching the right people, um, you know, with the right frequency and what is the customer journey before and after they're clicking on your ads. All of those things are super important to know and to track. Um, so this, uh, this was a lot because <laughs> the digital marketing world is very expansive, but I really appreciate you joining me today and we'll be moving into a quick question and answer session if you have anything for me. Um, but I would love to connect with you outside of um, here if you're interested. Um, my email address is listed right there. And thank you so much for having me today. Thank you so much for that presentation. It was, it was chock full of information. Um, I hope our audience sort of absorbed all of it. Um, but it was fascinating and I, and I, I really appreciated, uh, the presentation and you jumping on to do the Q and a with us. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Awesome. So if you don't mind, what we'll do is, uh, jump into Q and a once again, for our audience, you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the Q and a box. It's on the lower left-hand side of your screen there. The first question. Um, is actually from me, and, and I'm, this is more my curiosity than anything else. So the first question is, why is it important to have a website and not just use social media for your website like Facebook or Instagram? Why is it important to have a website? Yeah, that's a great question, absolutely. And I know websites can be very expensive and very overwhelming to people. So it makes sense that you might think, oh, we'll just have an Instagram and we'll drive the traffic there. But if you're running any sort of substantial ad campaign, you're going to want to have a site to link back to both so people can see your information as well as so you can track your own information through those platforms like Google Analytics, through pixels that we're placing on a website. We can set up really specific landing pages with contact forms and actions we want people to take. Um, it's just a really a best practice for business um, in, in this century um, and probably will be forever um, because you want that digital footprint to, to just be there so that people know you're legitimate, people know you're real. I think we've probably all had the experience where we're trying to find information and we're, we're not finding it. Like we don't have a clear link to a website from someone's social media page or from their Google My Business page. And the first thought that goes through my mind, at least when that happens to me, is are they real? Do they exist? Because it <laughs> seems like if you don't have a website these days, right. like you're you're not even a business. So it's just important that you have that there and that you're able to really put your own story out there before people start asking a bunch of questions. You can present them what you want to put forth. So really, it's it's all about credibility, right? Have the website for credibility. Uh, you know, in today's day and age, it makes sense, um, of course. Okay, enough questions from me. Um, we're gonna take questions from our audience now. And the first question is sort of like your opinion, your take on something. So how do you feel about pay-per-click campaigns? Uh, are they worth the money for a small business? That is a good question. It it really depends. Um, would love to dive in and have that specific conversation with anyone because it depends largely on where you're located, how big your market is, and what your market is. So let's say you're a really small insurance company. I would probably not recommend starting out with pay-per-click <laughs> because you have those big players in the insurance game who are spending literally millions of dollars on pay-per-click, you're never going to win that game as a small business. So we can think of other creative strategies that would support that better. But let's say you are a, a local business, service-based business, and there's not too many other people doing what you're doing, or there's not too many other people in your area that are 
paying for Google ads, we could go in with you know, probably one to two thousand dollars a month and get you some really quality leads generated through a pay per click campaign just based on competition, location, services, keywords, a lot of research that goes into making that decision. So it's not like a blanket answer, but it is a great question. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, it it depends on your business, right? If it if if you think you can be a benefit by doing a pay per click, do it, right? And and if you don't think, maybe hold off a little bit. But none of this stuff seems set in stone anyway, right? Absolutely, none of it. Yeah, it's crazy how much it can vary between even the clients that I work with. But yeah, if we're if we're if we're just putting a, a couple hundred dollars into pay per click don't do it. It's not going to get you what you want. Make sure you're working with a specialist yeah. who knows how to make the money work for you. Otherwise, spend that somewhere else. <laughs> okay. Next question. Um, can you talk about those three pictures? You mentioned in your presentation, you want to have three pictures to optimize your Google business. I guess uh, my guess is the audience member is asking what those photos should be. So, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more about those three pictures. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this and why we say three pictures is that's how many it usually pops up with when somebody types in, um, you know, what they're looking for on Google. So if I'm typing in restaurants near me and Google, it's going to be different based on your location, but a bunch of restaurants will pop up pop up and there'll be the local listing of the restaurant itself. And as the consumer, what I want to see when I'm looking for a restaurant specifically is what does it look like both from the inside and the outside? You know, what kind of like vibe can I expect when I get there? And then I want to see pictures of the food because I want to know if it looks good not, or not, you know? Um, so when you're talking about a more service-based business, you might want to have a picture of your team. Uh, they look like they're working hard or they look like they're really friendly and providing quality service. You may want to include your logo in there as one of the photos. Um, you may want to include just a picture of your work. Again, it really depends on kind of what you're offering there, but you're just going to want to paint a picture for someone who has stumbled across you on Google, who doesn't know who you are at all, of what kind of business you are. You want to come across as really just friendly, high quality, want to put good pictures out there for their very first impression of you. So, and a quick follow-up, um, tagging pictures on their website? Um, they, I think that seems to be sort of a little, could a little, be, yeah. Yeah, they could be pictures from anywhere. You upload them straight into the Google My Business platform. Um, but yeah, it's always good to have that consistency. If you have quality pictures on your website, you could definitely throw those in there. Awesome. Awesome. Once again, our audience, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A box. Kayla and I are answering your questions on all things digital marketing. Another question here, and, and it seems like it's a, it's a pretty basic one, but it might be sort of a, a broad answer. Um, how do you indicate if a video is successful on social media? Yeah, that's a good question too. Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of different indicators and um how do you evaluate if a video is successful i'm going to go back to speaking to that consistency piece so if you're if you're you know putting all of your time and effort into making one really good video um for your instagram i wouldn't really highly recommend that unless it's just <laughs> going to be an ad that you're running as right, a right, sponsored right. piece because um the goal is consistency so maybe focus more on spreading out a little bit of content um but overall what makes a a good typically a good performing video for social media would be something that is instantly engaging so you've got about one to two seconds to capture someone to make them even want to watch the rest of your video before they keep scrolling past it um so you want to either like ask a question in the beginning or say something really compelling or um even off-putting a little bit where people are like hmm what is that about and then um it, keep it short as short as possible probably 15 to 30 seconds if we're doing sure. something on Instagram and then you can track metrics so you can play around a little bit with your own videos that you post if you're doing them consistently like once a week at least um and you know just collect your own data and see right. I did this in this video it performed really well I did something different in this video and it didn't perform as well 
I remember reading something long ago that nothing, no videos should be longer than like four minutes. I imagine, I mean, this was long ago. I imagine that timeline has shrunk considerably. <laughs> I think it, I think yeah, it that did four minute one. significantly, especially during <laughs> like 2020. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. It, it's the, you know, the, the, the TikTok era of, of, or Instagram reels era of, of videos for sure. Um, exactly. Okay. Next question. Um, it's about testimonials, which I think is a really good question. Um, where should the testimonials be posted on the website? Or do you recommend maybe a special page for these testimonials? Yes, and yes. Um, I would say it's always good to have a little like excerpt from a testimonial on your homepage of your website. So people immediately see and then you can link back or have like a, in the top bar a link to more testimonials so people can really read and scroll through those um on google my business they'll just be there if someone's actually left a review and then good to share those on social media as well if you can get any testimonials on video it's hard to entice people to do that but mm -hmm. if you can those are ideal as well for both placing on your website and sharing on social as someone who's recorded testimonials on video i can attest how difficult that is sometimes <laughs> for sure um okay we've got another question here um and it's about uh those 30 platforms you mentioned um what are some of those uh other <laughs> platforms to list businesses in addition to google yes good question i can probably get a list together for you <laughs> but um i know that we do map Quest, Yellow Pages, Hot Frog. Uh, there's all kinds of like Angie's List, I think. There's all kinds of different ones, and some of them are really industry specific or like location specific to where you live. But uh, it's great to be listed on as many of those as possible, not because people are using them, but because it gives you an SEO boost. Like, I don't know the last time anyone here went to mapquest.com to like look up a business or anything like that, but it just helps because Google is like, oh, wow, they're listed in all these different places. We're going to boost them up in local search because they must be legitimate. I don't think I've thought about MapQuest in like a decade. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, that's funny. I'm 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 so happy we well the 90s are back and now we're bringing back MapQuest, you know. We're going to go yeah. we're going to throw it all. For sure. As we should. Just yeah, print out your directions and <laughs> 100%, right? 100%. Um that's wraps it up for our Q&A. Kayla, thank you so much um for thank being you. here and and sharing um, all of your expertise um, for digital marketing strategies. Before I let you go, once again, um, I'll give you an opportunity uh, to market yourself, if you will. Awesome. Yeah, you can find me um, on LinkedIn is where I'm probably most active. Um, just type in Kayla Bryant Sacramento and you'll probably find me. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And, and DMG as well, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, Digital Marketing Group. You yep. can, can find us there. You can email me, Kayla.Brian at digitalmarketinggroup.com. Would love to connect. I think I said in my intro that they're in California. They're actually in Portland and you're in... Headquartered in Portland. Yeah, I'm yes. in California. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Kayla. And thank you thank to you. our audience for joining us today uh, a little housekeeping here for ignite you you can visit us on our website igniteuny.com we've got a whole bunch of events going on on ignite you we have our next workshop on negotiating that'll take place on november 2nd um, and you can sign up on our website igniteuny.com our next spark session is on exit strategy uh, which is a fascinating topic um, and you can sign up again at our website, IgniteUNY. You can also sign up for one-on-one -on -one consultations um, right there on our homepage. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention to follow us on all sorts of social media, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, all of the above, IgniteUNY for sure. So that wraps it up for today. My name is Phil Lavanco. Thank you so much for joining us. For our Spark session, we will see you next time.